let's get started. I'm gonna put those right there and we can just start. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Kat and today we're gonna be talking about all the books that I want to read this spring or I guess all the books I want to try and prioritize because who knows if I'll actually get to them. I have like a smaller stack than I usually have for any of my TBR videos. I feel like if you watch them in the past, I feel like I typically have like 10 to 12 books, but for this one I only have six and it's mainly because I have some fun trips coming up and I just don't know if I'm going to have as much time to read, but also I want to allow myself to have a little bit more flexibility with what I'm wanting to read and let myself be more of a mood reader. I typically am a mood reader, but I also really like to just make lists of books. So for the books that I put together for this list, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily like springy books, but they're just books that I really want to prioritize because next thing you know, it's going to be like the end of the year and I'm going to have not gotten to them. Okay, so the first book that I have, and I didn't put this stack in any specific order, I just like put the stack on. There's no rhyme or reason here, but I don't think I've ever done a graphic novel in any of my seasonal TBR videos that I can remember. Maybe I did actually. Anyways, I'm adding a graphic novel because I feel like this will be a really easy book to kind of get through. I've really been enjoying graphic novels and sprinkling them in, especially when I just want to like get through a book in a day and I can just sit with it all day and kind of fly through it. This one has been on my TBR for a while now, ever since Gigi from Gigi Reads with Kiki on Bookstagram told me about this one. I immediately added it to my TBR and I think I also saw that Maddie really liked this one over at Mads Reads. I think it was Maddie. Anyways, I haven't even told you what the book is, but it's Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me, and it's by Mariko Tamaki, and I also see Rosemary Valero Ocano. I am very freaking excited for this one. It looks so good, and the art of it looks so nice. I really, really like this, the art style. So I think I'm just going to enjoy it very much so. But this was lent to me and I feel like I need to prioritize it because I've just been like holding it for like a month now. So that's the main reason why I wanted to put it on my spring TBR. And I don't know, something about the cover does kind of give spring vibes. But let me read what it's about. All Freddie Riley wants is for Laura Dean to stop breaking up with her. The day they got together was the best one of Freddie's life, but nothing made sense since. Laura Dean is popular, funny, and so cute, but she can be really thoughtless, even mean. Their on-again, off-again relationship has Freddie's head spinning, and Freddie's friends can't understand why she keeps going back. When Freddie consults the services of a local mystic, the mysterious seek her, she isn't thrilled with the advice she receives, but something's got to give. Freddie's heart is breaking in slow motion, and she may be about to lose her very best friend, as well as her last shred of self-respect. Fortunately for Freddie, there are new friends in the Insight of Advice columnist Anna Vice to help her through being a teenager in love. Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell bring to life a sweet and spirited tale of young love that asks us to consider what happens when we ditch the toxic relationships we crave and embrace the healthy ones we need. That sounds so sweet. So that's Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. Really excited for it. And ugh, isn't it so pretty? I really love it. Oh my God, the little art on the bottom. Really cute. I'm so excited for this one. So that's my only graphic novel that I have on this list. Hopefully I'll read more though. I feel like I've read a few this year, so... Hopefully I'll be able to squeeze in some more. Okay, and then the next one that I'm hoping to read is The House Guest by Amparo Davila. This is translated from Spanish. So it's translated by Audrey Harris and Matthew Gleason. Oh, that's interesting. So two people. So that'll be interesting to see if there's like a difference in any of the short stories depending on who translated it. If you watched my recent video where I do a book haul. I talked about this one. It was one that took me such a long time to get my hands on, but I'm so happy that I finally own it. And it's just a collection of short stories and they're horror. So I'm really excited for it. And I feel like I wanted to add it to my list because like I said, I've been wanting to read it for a while. And I'm hoping that if I put this in the stack, I'll actually get to it. And I don't read horror often, but I feel like something about like the spring is making me want to read more horror. I don't know why. I just feel like I want to sneak it in. And maybe it's because there's more daylight in the springtime and I'm like, cool, more time for me to actually be able to read it during the daylight when the sun is out 
so I don't get scared. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is, but so excited for this. But let me read the back. Like those of Kafka, Poe, or Shirley Jackson, Amparo Davila's stories are terrifying, mesmerizing, and expertly crafted. You'll finish each one gasping for air. With a cute psychological insight, Davila follows her characters to the limits of desire, paranoia, isolation, and fear. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for this. She is a writer obsessed with obsession who makes nightmares come to life through the everyday. I'm like panicking. <laughs> Am I sure I want to read this? Okay, where was I? Who makes nightmares come to life through the everyday. Loneliness sinks in as early as a razor sharp knife. Some sort of evil lurks in every shadow. Delusion takes the form of strange and very real creatures. After reading The House Guest, Davila's debut collection in English, you'll wonder how this secret was kept for so long. I'm scared and I haven't even, oh my god. So yeah, I'm adding the house guest to my list. We will see how it goes. I'm definitely going to read this during the daytime when it's not scary and dark out. Yep, but that's the house guest. I will definitely keep you posted on how that goes. Okay, so up next is Francisco, what did I say? Francisco by Allison Mills Newman and the main thing I think about whenever I see this book is Kat's review of it on Instagram where she said that this is like a hornier Mod Martha. That review has just like stuck with me ever since I've read it so I obviously added it to my TBR and then when I was in New York last year at some point I feel like it was around this time maybe I picked up a copy and I was looking through and I picked up my copy from You and Me Books and I don't know when this video is going up. I think it's going to be up, I don't know, but I am going to New York in a couple of weeks and I'm so excited. So I kind of want to like also read this on my trip to New York because it'll be like a full circle moment where I bought this in New York and then I read it in New York. Like, I think that'd be really cool. So we will see. Let me read the back for you. Alison Mills Newman tells the vibrant story of a young black woman's love affair with an indie filmmaker, Francisco. Described as a portrait of the artist as a young black woman trying to find a way back to herself. In the new foreword by Saidia Hartman, Francisco unfolds like an on-the-road diary of a young actress and musician as she becomes increasingly disillusioned with success in Hollywood. She chronicles her bohemian life with her filmmaker lover visiting friends and family up and down California, and her involvement in the 1970s black arts movement. Love and friendship, long revealing conversations, parties and dancing in Berkeley and LA. Francisco celebrates the workings of a positive, alive life that is good value, quality, caring, truth, the gift of art for the survival of the human heart. Dang. So yeah, I am so excited. I really hope that I'm able to get to this one in the spring. All right, and then up next is Say It Again in a Nice Voice by Meg Mason. This will be the third book that I read by Meg Mason, and I believe she only has three books out, so I think this will have been her whole collection. I read Sorrow and Bliss, I think like two years ago, and I buddy read that with Seiki, and after we buddy read Sorrow and Bliss together, we were like, all right, next March, let's read another Meg Mason, and we did. We read, oh my god, I don't remember what it was called. Let me see. I feel like there was something about milk in it. Something something milk. <laughs> You Be Mother. Okay, not anything about milk. The cover has a, a glass of milk, but we buddy read You Be Mother last March. And so to keep up with tradition, this March we want to read Say It Again in a Nice Voice and we'll have gotten through her whole catalog. So this is actually Meg Mason's memoir and it's supposed to be really funny. I think she talks a lot about motherhood in this one. It kind of makes me think of You Be Mother a little bit. So I'm kind of curious, now that I've read You Be Mother, if I'll feel like there's any similarities or crossovers. Super excited to buddy read this one with Seiki, and then we have to figure out another author that we want to read their backlist from. But on the back it says, At 24, Meg Mason was newly married after landing her dream job writing for the Times in London. Nothing, she told herself, could possibly go wrong. Eight months later, she was heavily pregnant and sobbing on the side of a road over trading her career for something she knew nothing about. But she soldiered on one fine Sunday, she invented motherhood by having a baby. On Monday, she discovered that a bunch of women had already done that, but still they couldn't tell her how to do it. Thanks to a helpful neighbor, she learned that convincing 
a newborn to take a bottle by letting it lick a Dorito first to get more thirsty didn't always work, but not what to do when your child won't sleep for roughly two years. Why making friends at the park is more difficult than meeting deadlines, or how to remove your hand from a stroller after you've super glued it to the handle. Hair raising, terrifying, and hilariously funny. Along the way, she discovers that being a mother, however disaster prone, just might be the only thing that she is truly irreplaceable at. So that's what this is about. So curious, like I said, to see how it relates to You Be Mother because You Be Mother was about like a young mom and her navigating that. So very curious on how similar they'll be. Okay, and then up next, I did have to reach out to my buddy, my pal, Kat, over at Kat's Field Notes to get some information on what Toni Morrison, I should read next. I was telling her that I was thinking about reading The Bluest Eye, and she was like, that one's really heavy, but I think you should start with Sula, and I've already read Sula, but like Kat has said in a lot of her videos, Toni Morrison demands a reread, so I'm actually going to be buddy reading Sula with Kat, and I'm probably going to read that one soon. So I'm not really counting that one in this video, but it could also be like in my spring TBR. But then after Sula, we are going to buddy read The Bluest Eye Together by Toni Morrison. And I'm so excited. Like I am honored to be buddy reading a Toni Morrison with Kat because I just know that she loves Toni Morrison so much and I feel like she's already read The Bluest Eye. So it's going to be so helpful to have someone there to kind of talk about it as we go. And yeah, I'm so excited for this. But let me read the back for you in case you don't know what The Bluest Eye is about because I don't know what the bluest eye is about. Bacola Breadlove, a young black girl, prays every day for beauty, mocked by the other children for the dark skin, curly hair, and brown eyes that set her apart. She yearns for the blonde hair and blue eyes that she believes will allow her family to fit in. Yet as her dreams grow more fervent, her life slowly starts to disintegrate in the face of adversity and strife. A brilliant examination of our obsession with beauty and conformity. I think this is gonna be so good. And just so excited to dive in a little bit more into Morrison's catalog. So we have one book left and I'm just now realizing that this video, I feel like half of the books are books that have been recommended to me by Kat or have been influenced by Kat. So shout out to you Kat because <laughs> these are all like books that I've heard you talk about. But up next is Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe. I have had this book on my shelves for the longest time. I want to say a year, maybe a little bit more, maybe like two years. I came across this in a free little library and I remember seeing the cover and I was like, I feel like I've seen this before. I'm just going to grab it. And I know that Patrick Ryan Keefe wrote Empire of Pain and I remember seeing a lot of people talk about that one and how they really loved that one. And just in general, how like captivating his writing is, especially because it's like nonfiction and sometimes that's not always the case with nonfiction. Seeing Kat talk about this, and then also seeing Yana talk about this, I am like so excited to give this a read. Finally dive in. I remember there was a time where I was trying to read Milkman and <laughs> didn't really like finish that one because I feel like I just need more context. So I'm hoping to read Say Nothing. Eventually I'd like to read Trespasses. I feel like I keep saying I want to read Trespasses and I just haven't, but I think I really want to dive into this one. I think this spring will be when I actually read this because I just want to learn more about the troubles and what happened. There's a lot that I don't know and by a lot that I don't know, I know nothing. So, so glad that I got my hands on a copy from like a free little library and so glad that I actually just like ended up grabbing it. And maybe I'll read more from Patrick Radden Keefe because I've just heard that Empire of Pain was also so excellent. So, I don't know. I'm just like so excited to finally hopefully, please get to this book. So that's Say Nothing. And that is the last book on my list. I feel really good about setting a shorter TBR because like I said, I just want that flexibility. I am so excited for the spring. When I'm filming this, daylight savings hasn't happened yet, but it's about to and I'm so excited for more sunlight and more time to just like hang out outside. Spring is coming, warmer weather, probably rainier weather. So I'm just looking forward to it. I really love the spring and fall. Also winter. I don't like summer very much, so there you go. Fun little fact about me. Summer is probably like my least favorite 
season. I don't think I mentioned it earlier in this video, but I'm so excited because this spring I'm going to Colombia and I'm going to visit my family. I'm just like so excited to go back. I haven't been there in a very, very long time and I'm just so curious to see what it'll be like to go as an adult. I hope that I can squeeze in some reading while I'm there. I'm probably going to bring my Kindle with me, so that's why I also didn't really want to make a long list of books because I'm probably going to get a lot of them from the library. But yeah, that's it. That's all I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed Enjoyed this video and that you're doing well. I would love to hear any like books that you're super excited to get to this spring, whether it's like a new release or just like books that you want to get to from your own TBR. I'd love to talk about that down below in the comments and that's it. That's all I have. I hope you're doing well. I appreciate you being here and hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.